Welcome to Heart Speak with your host, Naomi Hori. Speaker, healer, intuitive, and teacher Naomi Hori is here to provide conversations featuring experts from all ranges of specialties, including heart based poet, spiritual teachers, and many others. So sit back and get ready to be inspired. Please welcome the host of Heart Speak, Naomi Hori. Welcome back to Heart Speak with Naomi Hari, and I'm your host. We're live with Bold Brave TV Network, and we're here with two special guests, Laura Ziegler and Christopher Thornton, and they're going to be talking about their journey with acro yoga. Thank you so much for joining us, Laura and Christopher. Yeah, thank um, you for having us. Yeah. So, Laura, I got a chance to know you when my family member gifted me an amazing time massage with you. And that's when I also got to experience the therapeutic flight with you. And Christopher, I got to know, know about your acro yoga when I met you at Zook. I think it was maybe the Denver Zook Marathon, but I, I, I could so. tell it and I got to hear all this, uh, all this stuff about your acro yoga. So I'm really excited to speak to you in more depth now. Um, Likewise. Laura, would, would you like to start talking about your journey uh, getting into acro yoga? And then Christopher, I'll be asking you the same thing. Sure, thank you. Um, yeah, I found acro yoga, gosh, about 13 years ago, just after I'd done my yoga teacher certification. Um, my background is in um, martial arts actually i had done aikido for years and so after i you know got certified teaching yoga i sort of thought i invented partner yoga i was like <laughs> oh we could do this with other people <laughs> um and uh then somebody informed me that it was already a thing that existed <laughs> uh, um and i was actually at a, a festival up in northern iowa teaching a partner yoga class when uh this uh, guy from Minneapolis showed up to my class and after class he said hey can I show you something and so he flew me for the first time and I just thought it was the most amazing thing so you know that's that's the the start um, and from there I just kept seeking it out when I moved to Boulder Colorado that's when I met my teacher Yuki um, and just really kept going on this journey because it's such an amazing practice I love it Oh, thank you for sharing your story, Laura. And Christopher, I'd love to hear your story as well, how you got into acro yoga. Yeah, uh, mine was uh, essentially part of my fitness journey. I was, uh, I'd been going to the gym for a couple of years. That was after I'd done the, the P90X thing uh, with the at-home videos because I was a little nervous about going to the gym, wasn't really sure how to lift weights and things like that at that point. And uh, I had, had gotten burnt out on going to the gym. I'd been having to listen to podcasts and audio books and things like that to stimulate uh, uh, my mind as, while I was you know, lifting iron, you know, putting, picking up heavy things and putting them back down. Uh, and so I was desperate to find something that was a little more engaging because I could tell that I was starting to kind of waste my time in the gym. And I was on, I think either Groupon or maybe meetup.com and kind of looking at various groups like hiking groups and rowing groups and things like that. Um, the rowers get up really early in the morning. So that was kind of a, a non-starter for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had found an open house for an aerial yoga studio uh, where they often have the, the slings uh, that you can hang upside down in and, and stretch and things like that. And so it didn't sound like my cup of tea exactly, but I decided to give it a shot uh, because I, I enjoy trying new things. And so I went, I was instantly hooked. Um, uh, we haven't even gotten to the acro yet, but they had the apparatuses like ropes and uh, static trapeze, the ones that don't swing, um, and then silks that you can climb and hang upside down in. And it was such a novel, interesting form of exercise. Uh, it really felt more like play uh, than exercise, which is what really drew me to it. And then also uh, just the way that the classes were designed, there was a lot of um, partner stretching and just a lot of teamwork and team building. You really got to know people as opposed to, you know, plugging in ear pods uh, while at the gym and, and kind of vibing out on your own. Um, so I joined immediately, uh, got a kind of a monthly membership, all you can, all you can exercise, all you can stretch, all you can yoga buffet. And uh, two months later, they introduced uh, a beginner level introductory partner acro program. And uh, I fell in love with that. Uh, you don't even need an apparatus for that. All you need is another human, a uh, patch of grass somewhere, a carpeted floor. And uh, I instantly fell in love with it. It's um, the, just the mental challenge and the fact that it doesn't really feel like exercise. It feels a lot more like play, which has taught me that that's a really uh, important aspect in my life. 
Exactly. I think play is such a key thing and in, in that connection aspect too of, of uh, acro mm -hmm. yoga is, is gorgeous. <laughs> and I'd, I'd love to ask both of you too, you know, I, I know a lot of people have so many different spiritual practices, whether it's uh, drawing or painting or doing music or walking meditations or, or sitting there praying, whatever it looks like. And I feel like acro yoga has a very spiritual component to it as well. Do you, do you feel like that? And if so, how, how does it work for you? Yes, definitely. Um, that's one of the things that really kept me going down this path and wanting to actually teach acro yoga and share it with people is that, you know, I found that in my yoga practice, while it was incredibly important to have this um, solo practice of like getting real with yourself and meditating and stillness and breath and all of those things that translating that to real life um, was a big step, right? Because most of life is interactive. You're with other people, you know? And so how do you continue to be in that um, connected, grounded, yogic place within yourself while stepping into partnership or relationship with others? And so that was really, for me, what um, made acro yoga more than just a physical practice, which it is a wonderful physical practice and you can get strong and flexible and lots of wonderful, you know, things that are good for the body, but the, the mind heart piece of it, of connecting with another person in an embodied way. Um, I think when we connect through our bodies, we can't, can't lie with our bodies. You know, our bodies are not as good as our brains um, at that. And so we just uh, connect more authentically. That, that's a great point. I, I love how bodies are, are so honest with us, even when our head's like, no, 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 there's no problem. Our bodies are like, yes, <laughs> there, is, there is something going on that you need to look at, <laughs> whether you want to or not. So I, I think that's so important just to, to embody all of who we are. Thank you, Laura. That's, that's a wonderful point. Christopher, would you like to add anything to that discussion? or? Sure. Yeah. Uh, for me personally, my spiritual journey is, is always ongoing. Um, and so I, I don't know that I, uh, yeah. Uh, what I would say here is that uh, one of the really interesting things to me about acro yoga and recreational partner acrobatics is that there's a really kind of sacred trust between um, all the participants. Uh, you have the flyer who's typically the person up in the air, or the people up in the air, you've got the bases or the base, and then you have the spotters as well who, uh, who are also in charge of uh, helping to keep everything safe. Um, and so there's, uh, we talk about entering flow states in various disciplines, right? Uh, you know, the runner's high and the, uh, some kind of creative or, or, or dancing pursuit or anything like that, Zook, for example. Um, and I feel that acro helps me, you know, is conducive to my entering a flow state when I am um, doing things with flyers that, uh, you know, could result in injury. And so you're always having to be focused. You're always having to be 100% present. And so um, one of the things that I've really credited acro with is the fact that it has sharpened my uh, ability to really tune into someone. Uh, Laura mentioned authentic relating and, and, 10 -ish years ago when I started acro yoga, I, I hadn't heard that term yet, but uh, I feel like it really facilitates authentic relating between humans. And um, the fact that you do have someone's safety and well being in your hands, uh, often literally, uh, or on your feet, often literally, uh, uh, is uh, just a really sacred trust that I have always found to be incredibly valuable. Um, and, and I'm honored by it when people trust me uh, with that. And so I can enter, uh, some people would call it a tunnel vision uh, state. Uh, I, I would be a little more uh, generous and, and, and more like a flow state in terms of how focused and, and connected with that person and kind of everything else falls by the wayside during that. And so to me, that is um, spiritual. Yes. Yeah. That, that's one thing that I, I really noticed when I met each of you, your ability to be present and also that I, I just totally trusted you because you were you were present and and I just felt like I was very safe in your hands, even though I, I mean, my dad, when I was little, did something similar to that therapeutic flight. And it just reminded me as a kid, Laura, when you did that for me and, and Christopher, when we were zooking too, I just felt 
that trust in you, even though I, I kind of have some dance anxiety come up for me in general, but I felt very safe dancing with you and it was a really beautiful experience. Yeah, thank you. Do, you, do either of you have any uh, specific examples of, of how acro yoga has helped you um, gain awareness of things you were working through or, or just building trust maybe with a specific relationship or client or anything else? Yeah, I think Laura went first last time. So um, 100%, I, I mean, how, how much time do you have, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have found that one of the really nice things about Acro is, um, you know how people lament uh, the fact that it's difficult to make, you know, true friendships, certainly, certainly after college and, and maybe after high school. And, and then, you know, maybe it's only possible to make friends in the workplace and things like that. And, and people talk, at least in Seattle, where I am, uh, I'm based, people talk about the flakiness and, and how people say, uh, you know, let's hang out some time, but then you never hear back from them and things like that. What I love about Acro is there's a lot of collaboration. You're often laughing together because you're trying to problem solve and figure things out. Sometimes you fall gently into a kind of a crumple or a heap, and then you, you know, get up and, and try and diagnose what went wrong. And so there's so much uh, collaboration. I've often described Acro as a crucible for forging friendships because it's almost like the express track to really getting to know someone. You get to know how they problem solve. You get to know, you get to learn about how they approach challenges, approach hardship, approach feelings of um, inadequacy or, or incapability. Um, and it really is, in a lot of ways, very exposing. It's a, it's a, in a lot of ways, it's a practice in vulnerability. Um, people can always compare themselves to others. Dancing has, has these analogs as well, right? Um, and uh, just the fact that Acro really has 100% changed the way I communicate with other humans. Um, it's taught me to empathize more. It's taught me to listen more because often as bases and flyers and spotters, we're listening to the other people in the partnership in all kinds of ways, not just with our ears, but uh, uh, I, could, I, could, I could detect the other day, just last week when I was introducing someone to Acro at a dance retreat that I was at, I could detect that their uh, blood pressure had increased and elevated because my feet were um, in, a, in a plank, they were on their hips, uh, and I could feel the, the blood increasing through their femoral artery. Um, when they were very nervous about uh, being in the air and, and being supported by another human. And so that changed the trajectory of the rest of the experience that I was, I went slower and checked in more often and, and things like that. And so um, it's kind of ironic because I'm uh, hard of hearing. I'm totally deaf in one ear, but uh, Acro has taught me to listen better than any other experience in my life. That's gorgeous. Thank you, Christopher. Laura, Laura would you like to share any anything yeah definitely i mean like christopher i have a million examples <laughs> um i think you know myself the place where it showed up the most was learning to fly this happens often as a teacher i see this a lot of times with my students that people tend to sort of gravitate towards one role or the other initially, right? To feel more confident or comfortable in one role or the other. Um, and so I was naturally more comfortable as a base, which makes sense kind of thinking about psychologically, like I feel confident in my own abilities to support other people, um, but it's an edge for me to trust others and trust that they can support me um, as well. So I'm like asking for help, like, I'm getting better. <laughs> Acro yoga for 13 years, I'm getting better at asking <laughs> for help. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so just learning to fly and leaning into that and trusting that my partner, uh, you know, would have me no matter what and that my spotter was there for me. Um, and trusting, you know, myself to, to enter into that precarious place and allow myself to be held by others was big. And, um, and then just witnessing that in people that come to the practice and, and you know, ways that people grow in their communication skills and in their ability to show up in relationship to others has been incredibly powerful. You know, I just love watching the evolution of people as they enter the Acro Yoga community. And then, you know, <laughs> years later, you're like, wow, looking back, that person has changed and Acro Yoga has had something to do with it. A lot of growth, that's, yeah. That's beautiful. It looks like it's time to take a little break and hear a message from our sponsors, but we'll be right back. And, and Christopher, I'd uh, love to hear uh, about some tips uh, for connecting and dancing with people when we get back. 
What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome back to Heart Speak with Naomi Hari. I'm your host, and we're live with Bold Brave TV Network. We're here with Laura Ziegler and Christopher Thornton. Christopher, um, I'd love to hear uh, your perspective or tips on connecting with people through movement, whether that's acro yoga or dance, because you know when we dance together, I notice you're really good at both leading and dancing in a coordinated yet dynamic way that not many people can. And this ability to just focus in like a laser and be fully present, which is pretty impressive. Do you have any tips for others um, for developing the skill? Because I know this is something as human beings, we're all always trying to improve the skill in ourselves well uh you flatter me naomi thank you i, I recall our dances as well um i, I can uh expound on acro uh, for days on end um dance i consider myself an intermediate dancer so uh maybe you know listeners and viewers take this with a grain of salt uh but certainly acro has helped me in certain ways in dance um in that i'm always looking for you know maybe what i would consider micro cues for anything there could be a, a raising of an eyebrow or a uh, in acro, like a very slight tensing, for example, because sometimes we're going off stack ever so slightly. So it kind of feels like we might be falling. Um, and you can feel uh, the, you know, uh, when flyers or, or, or even spotters, perhaps you can see it in your peripheral vision when people can kind of tense up a little bit. And so uh, I would have to think on it longer, but there are essentially a myriad of cues that we can tune into more than just more than just kind of basic facial expressions um uh more than uh more than just like pulling away or or, or being drawn in um by a follower or by a lead um and so what i try to do is kind of watch everything all at once certainly as a lead there's also the idea of floor craft where you have to make sure that you're not crashing your follow into other people or you're not entering other people's you know slots in the dance or or, or their kind of zone where they're dancing um and it's definitely a skill that takes a lot of practice because the more that you realize there is to pay attention to or the, or the better you get at the skill, even more you realize there's more to pay attention to. Um, so the most, I, I think the biggest tip that I can give to new leads that I wish I'd understood starting out is that leading is actually secretly following. Um, leading is creating an invitation, creating a suggestion, uh, creating a container in, in which the follow can um, vibe off that or, or play off that or, or follow it kind of quote unquote to the letter. Um, but then as soon as I've made my suggestion at the beginning of a, of a bar or a block of music, um, I become the listener and I become very adaptable because anything could happen. Anything could happen. And uh, it's that uh, dance, especially because everything's kind of spontaneous and everything's kind of 
um, happening very much in the moment. You don't have time to kind of crumple into a heap and come down and talk about it and get up and try it again. At that point, uh, the you know the the window of opportunity has been lost. Um, but what I do is at the very beginning of a block of music or a bar, I will make the suggestion, and then at that point, I'm in um, I'm in follow mode, and I'm I'm really getting to play off follows vision or interpretation or or sass or or, or sometimes even fears, uh, you know, if they can, there, there can be hesitancy, right? And so if I might lead something, I'm a little more prone to leading dips uh, in partner dance than, than perhaps the average lead because I'm so accustomed to weight sharing and I know, frankly, exactly what I can support and what I can't. Uh, that has tended to, based on what I've heard from follows, give them a sense of, of comfort and ability to be vulnerable and, and, and share their weight with me, even if they haven't met me before. Um, but I'm always listening for e even the slightest hesitancy, both in acro and, and partner dance. I, I, I love that the two are two sides of the same coin to me for a lot of the same reasons. And so I always get to practice those skills and hone them even further. That makes a lot of sense. And I, I know you're, you're very analytical, like it's almost like you have a supercomputer in your brain or something, but, <laughs> but you're also like very intuitive. Would you say, like, do you rely on one or, or another or they just kind of work together both? Hmm. That's a really interesting question. I would say ultimately they work together both. Uh, I would say they're probably both, I don't know, learned skills. You kind of have to learn how to make them work together, especially in real time in dance. Okay. Um, uh, without going into it too deeply, Acro taught me a lot of that, but then dance in a lot of ways elevated to another level because in acro work where typically if you're at a jam which is the acro equivalent of a dance social where it's just kind of free form and people are playing and and coming together and doing some stuff and then breaking off and working with other partners um typically you're trying something maybe it's at your edge or maybe you're revisiting something or refining something or refreshing something that you haven't done in a couple of years uh but you you know you take 5 10 15 seconds to do the maneuver or execute the trick or whatever uh, and then you come down and you talk about it. Um, whereas dances can be between three and 60 or more minutes of constant improvisation and communication and play and counterplay. Um, and so it really, uh, it takes those skills that Acro has taught me and and puts it in this kind of, well, it almost feels like a furnace to me where everything is churning at all times. And so um, the more dance that I get in my body, it's really nice because the more I can um, rely on certain sort of uh, things that are automatic for me, um, they feel like a, a resting space for me while I can think about, you know, listening to music or, or planning my next thing. Or, or if I'm, if I can tell that the follow it really enjoys a, a specific type of movement, could be micro movements, could be big dips, big flashy dips, dance lifts, whatever. Um, that allows me a little time to execute the, the, the supercomputer. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm honored. Uh, the supercomputer super computer aspect where I can start to scheme ahead a little bit, uh, kind of like chess, and kind of plan something bigger and more surprising and 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 crazier, and hopefully more memorable uh, for mm -hmm. a, a future point in the dance. Mm -hmm. I, I notice uh, also for both of you, actually, and, and I notice this with, with really anybody who is great at what they do, there's um, in Zook and in, in acro yoga, uh, and maybe it's partly because you have to be grounded, but that ability to be yourself, like even even if it means like flying your freak flag or whatever, just be being <laughs> uniquely you. And yeah. and there's something so beautiful in that, whether you're a dancer, a musician, uh, just any human being. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, me or. Uh, yeah, okay. you or, okay. or either of you. <laughs> yeah, uh, this resonates with me strongly. Um, dance comes a lot harder to me than acro. I'm not going to go uh, too much further in, the, in into it than that. Uh, but uh, I ask a lot of my close dance friends, um, you know, what makes a great lead? And so you've got these telltale fabled stories of these incredible leads, these mythical leads that, uh, you know, make the follow feel like uh, music incarnate or some kind of transcendental experience. I have not gotten that kind of feedback yet, so um, uh, I'm working my way up there, hopefully, because I would like to be that kind of human that can offer that type of experience. Um, I, I'd just uh, like to interrupt and, <laughs> and offer you feedback like that because I, I felt very safe dancing with you because you just gave me permission to be exactly me, and I, I, I felt that because of that, I could my analyzer and, and my any perfection pictures could kind of relax and dissolve a little bit and and have mm -hmm. the me flow out 
more truly for who I am. And I thank you for that, Christopher. Well, I, I thank you because you articulated exactly what I was searching for the words for is that the feedback I've gotten from um, friends who are primary follows in dance and then and then also in acro, there are analogs as well. And I'm sure as Laura can relate in terms of flyers feel like f feeling like the, the base is really solid or or safe or they've always got them right. Um, always uh, keeping their welfare in mind. Uh, what I've learned is one of the most fundamental tenets of dance that isn't really talked about yet, which is interesting to me. I've, I haven't really voiced this thought with anyone yet. So first time here on the show today. Uh, but if leads and follows to leads, I mean, it works in both directions, frankly. Um, if you can create a space where, this is my observation and I'm, I'm still developing it, but if you can create a space where your partner, whatever kind of partner that is, uh, dance partner, acro partner, relationship partner, friendship partner, familial partner, um, feels like they can be their true authentic self uh, without judgment, that you accept them no matter what, in all circumstances, regardless of what they're going through that day, that week, uh, regardless of you know how they feel like they look, uh, you know maybe they're not feeling as great in their body lately, maybe they're feeling like they're dancing is off time, um, maybe they're feeling like they missed a bunch of really obvious cues from the most advanced lead in the room or whatever, and now they're feeling embarrassed about their dancing or whatever. If you can accept someone wholly and completely, uh, they can give themselves wholly and completely to you in terms of like a dancer or whatever the context is, right? Uh, and so that's something that is always in the back of my mind at this point. It was kind of a revelation or epiphany after hearing similar verbiage from enough um, sort of follows and dance is what really brought it home to me. But when I look back and introspect on um, some of the conversations that I've had with, you know, flyers and, and bases in the acro community, it's it's completely analogous. Mm. And I think what you're talking about is is sort of one of the key human lessons too that we're all here to learn. And I, I've been practicing for decades, like being love in everything that I do with every person in, in my life, you know, uh, with, with the public, whatever, just doing everything with love. And I think that that really is the key, isn't it? What you're talking about, just unconditional acceptance right. and, and presence in each moment. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Thank you again for for crystallizing exactly the the point that I was trying to drive towards. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's 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 a great point. <laughs> thank you, Christopher. Uh, and and Laura, do you have anything to add to this conversation before we have to go on break? Oh, I mean, definitely. I could go on about it for a while. I I love your point about that that love and being love, and also you know self love, and that's a big part of my teaching practice uh, in the yoga realm. Um, is how do we um, by that acceptance of of others to ourselves first, and it, it makes a big difference. Um, and I think one of the ways I see it in acro yoga is with consent. Uh, we actually do in my retreats that I run, we all, um, almost always do consent games, where part of the game is to practice saying and receiving yes and no. Um, and we talk about it afterwards, and one of the really powerful things I think is, is that when somebody gives a no, um, it actually empowers other people, right? It empowers other people to stand strong in their, their yes or their no. It empowers both the yes and the no, the ability to, to say what you mean <laughs> in a moment like that. So I think that uh, stands out for me as well in this conversation. Yeah. I love that point. Thank you, Laura. Yeah. It's it's such a beautiful point too, and and not to get in in our egos too, or or have hurt feelings if you know when it is a no, because you know sometimes with with dance or acro yoga, it's like I'm actually tired, so I I want to you know take a break, and if people say they're tired, they they just need a break and not to read into it or anything like that, or even if they just don't want to dance with you, sometimes it it's just not a good energetic match, and that's okay too. It leaves you space to to find someone to do acro yoga with or dance with that is a, a good energetic match mm -hmm. yeah no being a complete sentence is something i've read in various dance community forums and things like that and and um it I, that was another light bulb for me and and it's the same thing in acro as well yeah yeah do you do you have any other thoughts you'd like to add laura yeah i mean i guess i i love that you're talking about free flag and it's it's Pride Month, and <laughs> um, I think you know really taught me a lot of how I interact uh, 
I identify as polyamorous and just this ability to show up in multiple relationships and, you know, polyamory not just being about multiple romantic partners, for me anyways, but about just the fact that there's, you you love so many humans on this planet and that, you know, the people you, you care about, the people you show up for in relationship, whether they're friends, whether they're children, parents, lovers, whatever the context, that you do that completely um, and authentically in the moment. Yeah. That's beautiful. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and we're going to take a quick break for another message from our sponsors who keep our show going. And we'll be right back. Uh, Laura, if, if you can lead that exercise on helping us find our balance. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm Naomi, and I'm your host of Heart Speaks with Naomi Hurry, and we're live with Bold Brave TV, here with Laura Ziegler and Christopher Thornton on Acro Yoga. Laura, could you lead us in a meditation on helping us find our balance? It would be my pleasure. Thank you, Naomi. All right, so go ahead and just take a moment to center yourself if you're seated. Uh, letting yourself rest into that. If you're standing, coming to stillness. Lying down is fine for this as well. You can close your eyes. And start with finding the breath. Breathe in through your nose and out of your mouth. Take a few breaths like that. And with each and open mouth exhale, just sending energy downward in your body, becoming aware of your physical connection to the ground, whatever's touching the ground, legs, feet, hips, maybe your back. Settling into a natural breath, you can breathe in and out through the nose as that becomes easy in your body. If you can feel where breath is moving in your body, so not just noticing that you're breathing, but physically feeling the rise and fall of the breath. Maybe your abdomen moves as you breathe. Maybe the heart moves, rising and falling with each breath. And then gradually from here, taking a moment to Feel the breath expand, doing this without any force. So we're not trying to push breath into different places, but inviting it in. 
Noticing maybe you can expand breath more to the sides of your body. Each exhale emptying out completely. Or can you feel breath in your back body? Just asking the question, the answer is no, no, that's fine. Just getting curious. And then I would love to share a breath practice that comes to me actually from the Hawaiian Huna tradition. It's called heart breath, although I found references to a similar breath in yogic texts and um, in Buddhist practices, so it shows up a lot of places. It's a very human practice. So for heart breath, drawing your awareness to your energetic heart. You could take a hand to the center of your chest. You could touch or tap this place, just bringing a little more attention here. And begin to imagine or intend that your breath is coming in and out through the center of your heart. So yes, we know literally it's still coming in and out through the nose or nasal mouth. But since the lungs fill in this chest area, maybe it's not too far of a stretch to imagine breath flowing through the heart. And unlike some other breaths where we might pull or push the breath, this is an effortless breath. So it's just the breath that comes with ease and goes with ease. And it's flowing through the heart chakra or the center of the heart. As we're practicing, you might notice that either the inhale or the exhale feels easier. If you notice that one part of the breath feels easier, go into that feeling with ease. Notice that quality and invite the other part of the breath to match it. It's almost like there's a window at the center of the chest that we just throw open so that the breeze of the breath can blow through it with ease. We'll stay with this for maybe another minute or so. Just inviting breath in and out through the center of the heart. Simply this. And the idea with this breath or the purpose of practicing this breath is to kind of quiet the, the noise of the heart chakra. The chakra, this central chakra in the seven chakra system is the place where we process all of our relationships. Um, and it's interpersonal relationships, certainly, but it's also um, our relationship with our environment or situations we find ourselves in. And so it can be a really high traffic area energetically. So this practice is just helping us find the quiet space. The word anahata um, in Sanskrit is often translated as the unstruck sound, um, which is like the center of the heart, the very quiet space of the center of the heart um, that is still and quiet. Easefully in, effortlessly out. which is simply to layer gratitude on top of the practice. So inviting into your mind's eye anything that you feel truly grateful for. 
If you struggle to find something today, maybe choose your breath or your life itself. Gratitude is an amplifier for the heart. As we begin to let go of this meditation, we'll let go of the focus on the meditation, on the breath practice, but if there's any feelings that have arisen for you, any quality that's come forward, invite that to stay. And then gently releasing the focus on the meditation. If your eyes are closed, they can open softly at first. Bring yourself all the way back into this moment. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laura. It was beautiful. Thank you. Christopher, do you do you have any tips on on other things people can do to help them find their balance? <clears throat> uh, it might sound like a cop out, but I would recommend trying acro if you haven't before. Um, I've heard it. I've heard a, a common refrain from people saying that uh, they're not ready to try acro yet because they don't feel like they're strong enough or light enough or flexible enough or any of these things, um, or maybe trusting enough. Uh, and one of the best ways to um, uh, facilitate, uh, you know, all those goals is to just do acro, just jump into it. Uh, it's a really supportive community. Um, you don't really get very far in acro yoga without being a, a supportive, empathetic person. You kind of self-select out a little bit. Um, but these are all learned skills. So um, acro is for everybody and every body is another one of my favorite um, adages about acro. Um, and so obviously Laura's, uh, you know, meditation and breath work are fantastic. I could use some more of that in my own life. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Laura. Um, but then also, uh, yeah, finding your own balance, you'll, acro is so novel and unlike anything we typically do as humans, that you will discover troves of things about yourself, uh, just by engaging yourself and immersing yourself in the practice. So, um, generally most cities of any reasonable size, at least in the U S have acro yoga communities that you can find via Facebook typically is the, is the, the general um, organizing, uh, you know, entity. There's like WhatsApp groups and things like that sometimes as well. Uh, but, you know, uh, find the, the local acro group and reach out and say, hey, I'm a complete beginner. I'm looking for beginner classes and I'm wondering if there are jams around that I can attend. And um, that, in my opinion, would be the fast track to uh, learning balance within oneself, both physically and also figuratively. Hmm. Christopher, what's the one thing that you, the biggest thing that you learned, I'm sure there are many, about yourself uh, by doing acro yoga that, that you feel like sharing? <laughs> All right. Uh, I, done, I generally only tell this to uh, close confidants, but I used to be a, a card-carrying misanthrope uh, before I found acro. Misanthrope meaning a, 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 a not, I didn't love people. Uh, I was more of an introvert. Um, I spent a lot of my time alone. I had a, a very small core group of friends. Uh, but a lot of the people that I had met, you know, in my travels and in my adventures, um, I just didn't vibe with that well. Um, and what Acro taught me is that I do love people and there's a ton of value in, frankly, literally every person. It taught me Acro to be able to learn to start to see that um, and to shed some of my own, um, uh, my own kind of uh, blinders and, and things like that. Some of my own preconceptions, let's say. Um, and we sometimes talk about, uh, in acro, you know, people that find acro are, will say things to the extent of, oh, these are, these are my people, right? These are, these are my folks. Um, I relate to these people, but I firmly believe that about every human and all the various different communities, you know, acro is not gonna be for everyone. That's fine. Um, perfectly acceptable Dance is not going to be for everyone. Also great. Um, but like rowing, for example, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is not something I've gravitated towards yet, but maybe one day, um, because acro has taught me that, uh, humans really are social creatures, even if they think that they aren't. 
and we can only be lifted up uh, when we when we make ourselves vulnerable. We reach out. Um, we allow ourselves to be our authentic selves and to be seen, right? Um, and then Acro really taught that to me that I do truly, genuinely love humans and humanity, um, and that uh, everyone under the sun is unique and beautiful, and uh, you know they are deserving of love and acknowledgement, and and to find the communities that may speak to them the most uh, from kind of a, a, a spiritual standpoint, um, to go back to your point earlier, um, even if they haven't found them yet, because I had not found my spiritual community until I found Acro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I suspect that many sensitive, kind souls do feel misanthropic or go through those stages in life as a a self-protection mechanism right. in a for world sure. that is not designed really for a true human authentic connection or you know or human health <laughs> so yeah, it's I relate, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and i'm wondering too because you know i know many people they it's very difficult for them to have their own balance whether it's just walking straight in a line or doing tree pose and yoga or, or things like that. And I imagine it might be even more complex when you're trying to balance with another person. Is that correct? Or, and if so, how, how do you handle that? Uh, in some ways that's, um, it, it, it's actually easier than it looks in that regard. In a lot of ways, a lot of, uh, when I uh, mentioned that a lot of people think they need to have a handstand, for example, or have a really um, well-honed yoga practice in order to join acro yoga. Um, one of the beautiful things about acro yoga, it, it is a division of labor. And so um, there are lots and lots of um, poses and, and sequences and flows and, and, and series of movement that can be uh, achieved through partnership that you know couldn't be done alone aside from the fact that you don't you're not on a base i guess you could use some kind of apparatus but because of the fact that there's someone else there who's sentient and is helping you and has your best interests in mind and you're working together collaboratively to achieve uh, a common goal a mutual goal um almost and i laura i'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this as well but almost without exception i have found that people are very surprised delightfully and impressed by the fact that they're their bodies and their capabilities and their minds uh, and their uh, capacity for teamwork are far greater than they imagined, um, you know, until starting Acro. Yeah, and that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Even regardless of whether the particular goal is met, just that process of, of trying to work towards a goal together is, is a beautiful thing. Um, okay. it, it looks like uh, it's time for a quick break. Laura, if you want to add any thoughts uh, to this conversation when we get back, and I'd also love to talk to you both about how people can work with you, get in touch with you, etc. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy 
sixthsense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's easysense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. We're back with Heart Speak with Naomi Hari, and I'm your host. We're here live with Bold Brave TV with Laura Ziegler and Christopher Thornton on Acro Yoga. Laura, before we talk about how people can work with both of you, is there anything you'd like to add to that discussion we just had about balance? Yeah, definitely. I, um... It's definitely, you know, I agree with Christopher, you don't have to come in with any, you know, special knowledge of uh, yoga or anything like that. People come in from all avenues, including just being a human, you know, it's a, it's a human practice. Anyone can do this. Um, I, uh, one of the things I love to do is to work with kids and families, you know, and we can, we can put babies up in acro yoga poses. My, uh, my son is going to turn 10 this summer. He loves to base. He always wants to base me and his dad. Um, and he can lift us off the ground, <laughs> um, you know, and so just the, you know, you have this capacity in your human body from the moment you're born to like figure out your relationship to gravity talking in a very physical sense you know that that ability to uh figure out but to, you know we learn how to crawl and learn how to walk i mean that's way harder than learning how to do acro yoga so <laughs> i think just knowing that it's something one can do and um and that in a way it, it will it will teach you what you need to know. You know, you don't need to come in with something before you start the practice. Mm. Thank you, Laura. And would you like to share uh, for those listening at home, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, what services are, are you offering? I, I know like for the Thai massage, for people who are uh, in the Denver, Boulder area in Colorado in the United States, uh, or if there, you know, any, any other ways they can work with you or, or just get in touch with you. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I do practice Thai massage um, and sometimes I do therapeutic flights as part of my practice. So if you're in the Denver Boulder area, um, that's something that I offer. I also teach weekly classes. Um, I do retreats several times a year, um, between three and five times a year. Many of them are in Colorado. Some of them are in other places around the world. So, um, but those are open to anyone, you know, easier than just coming to Denver for a uh, you know, a one once a week class, you're welcome to sign up for a retreat and come for a weekend or a week long retreat. Um, I'll be in New York City, uh, July 21st through the 23rd at the New York Acro Festival. Um, so if you're into Acro Yoga and you want to come to New York, that is one of my all time favorite Acro Yoga festivals. It's also one of the longest running in the country. Um, so yeah, lots of ways that people can stay connected. I also, um, teach children and family yoga and acro yoga. So those are things that I'm available for, available for hire. I do love to travel for work. Um, so if somebody's looking to bring me somewhere to teach that, uh, they can reach out. So the best way to get a hold of me is through my websites. I actually have two of them. So my personal website really has kind of the most broad spectrum of everything I do. That's sunshineyogahealing.com. And then I also Sunshine. have acro yoga specific. Oh, I'm sorry. So sunshineyogahealing.com, he said. Okay. Yeah. Sunshineyogahealing.com. Um, and then uh, my acro website is acro with Laura and Charlie.com. My partner's name is Charlie. So we teach together. Um, and then I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, Facebook, I'm just me, Laura Ziegler. <laughs> um, I also have a Sunshine Yoga uh, Facebook page as well. And on Instagram, I'm Laura Ziegler13. So although I'm not that big into social media, so like you might get a hold of me through Facebook Messenger. If you send me a message on Instagram, you won't hear from me for a while. So uh, <laughs> better to probably contact me through my website. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and for those of you uh, that are listening to the streaming, uh, uh, her last name is spelled Z-E-I-G-L-E-R. Z-E-I-G-L-E-R. 
G-L-E-R. Uh, thank you very much, Laura. And Christopher, how can people work with you and get a, in touch with you? Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for asking, Naomi. I'm Seattle-based. Um, Acro is more of a, a leisure activity and a personal practice for me. So unfortunately, I don't have any websites or anything like that yet um, that directly cater to uh, my Acro practice. But uh, I think that my Facebook profile is going to be listed on the show notes. I love to geek out with anyone and everyone on all things Acro Yoga, as well as a uh, partner dance as well. So um, please feel free to reach out. Anyone who happens to be traveling through or near the Seattle uh, area, I encourage to join the Seattle Acro uh, Facebook page. It's a public page. Um, and I would love to get together and, and work with people and, and, and visit. I do offer private lessons. It's not really something I advertise, but I am available for it. Um, and yeah, pretty much that. Okay. Thank you, Christopher. And Christopher's Facebook page uh, is Christopher James Thornton, T-H-O-R-N-T-O-N, T-H-O-R-N-T-O-N. T O N. I'd like to repeat it a couple times for those I, listening. For the listeners, the yeah. I, appreciate, I should have done that. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. And, and thank you so much for joining us today for the panel. You, you both are amazing. And, and the, you know, thanks for sharing all your wisdom about acro yoga and wisdom from your lives. Thank you. And thank yeah, you to all. Uh, thank you. And thank you to all of you at home that joined us today. Uh, please join us next week for another great conversation. And uh, I'm signing off live from Bold Brave TV. This is Heart Speak with Naomi Hari, your host saying, from my heart to yours. This has been Heart Speak with host Naomi Hori. Tune in each week as Naomi provides thought provoking talk with such guests as Angel Channeler, a dance teacher, embodying a spiritual and philosophical foundation, an animal communicator, a medium, an astrologer, a spiritual warrior, and more. Right here, Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV Network.